TheDailyMass.com. Experience the Roman Catholic Mass from historic St. Louis Cathedral every day on TheDailyMass.com. His love anywhere in the world. Good evening, I'm Sarah McDonald. And I'm Jason Angelette. Welcome to Issues in Faith. Well, it's summertime. Yes, and does that mean we go on a hiatus? We're going on vacation. Oh, that's right. Yes, no, we are going on a hiatus. <laughs> We're going to take July off and probably a little bit of August too so that people get back into the routine of school and um, give everyone here at LAE some time to work on some other projects. And What can people expect during this time? Um, we'll be running some reruns. Of, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll pick some of our favorite shows, and um, if if viewers have a favorite show that you'd like to see again, or you'd like to see again, let us know, and yeah. we'll we'll try and pull that. And um, you know, it, I think it's a good time for people to kind of catch up on things. And summertime is a time of vacation, and you know, the Holy Father every year, before he goes on his own retreat vacation sends out a message about the importance of rest and relaxation and bringing Christ into that rest and relaxation so that you're rejuvenated spiritually as well as physically and mentally. So, I, you know, we're going to take his example and take Praise some God. time off. Sounds so, good. But we'll definitely be back in August with all new information. And that too, if people have ideas for what they'd like to see when they come back, when we come back in the fall, let us know that too. We'd be happy to hear from you. Well, on the Feast of Corpus Christi this past Sunday, Pope Benedict XVI said the Eucharist is the heart of church life and an antidote to the increasingly individualistic global culture, and that the Eucharist is like the pulsing heart that gives life and meaning to everything the church does. He said the Sacrament of Communion is able to transform people's lives and lead them to God. Pope Benedict XVI himself gave a cyber spark of life to a new internet portal that gathers all Vatican news into one multimedia website. With a click of a tablet device on the evening of June 28th, Pope Benedict officially launched a new website that collects all of the news content from the Vatican's newspaper, radio, television, and online outlets. The site, www.news.va, is now fully functional. Initially, it will offer content in Italian and English, and new langu languages will be added gradually, beginning with Spanish followed by French and Portuguese. And following passage of leg legislation to allow same-sex marriage in New York, the Catholic bishops of New York expressed concern that both marriage and family will be undermined by this tragic presumption of government. In a June 24th statement, bishops said they were deeply disappointed and troubled at approval of a bill that will alter radically and forever humanity's historic understanding of marriage. That's a quote from them. The New York State Senate passed the measure in a 33 to 29 vote on June 29th, and New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, a Democrat and also a Catholic, signed it into law later that night. Unless it is delayed by legal challenges, it will take effect in late July. New York would then become the sixth state to permit same-sex marriage. Bottles Without Borders is a slogan for the Women's New Life Center's new virtual fundraising campaign, which allows anyone, anywhere, anytime to donate to the center and help them continue the important work of providing support for women and their unborn babies. This important campaign is using the internet to fill baby bottles in a cost-effective and far-reaching way to demonstrate that its mission to save babies and act as a haven for women and their families goes beyond the borders of Louisiana, touching women, unborn babies, babies and their families everywhere. Anyone who wishes to save lives and change lives can visit www.womensnewlifecenter.com and click on the Bottles Without Borders logo to join this campaign as a team captain, a team member, or a donor. Donors may contribute to one of the existing teams listed or simply donate to the Friends of the WNLC community team. And one of the New Orleans Archbishop's Gregory Amon's first priorities is that all Catholic ministries carry out their mission as an authentic Catholic way, an authentic Catholic way. Catholic Charities Archdiocese of New Orleans has taken a major step in creating a new position, the Vice President of Catholic Identity. Deacon Stephen Ferran joins us tonight to talk about his new role with Catholic Charities and what it means to their ministry. Well, again, thank you so much for being with us this evening. My pleasure. Um, 
we started off, Jason did your intro, you know, talking about being coming the Vice President of Catholic Identity and Mission for Catholic Charities. Mm -hmm. This is not where you started your career. No, I didn't. Um, uh, but my education is in education, and my degree is in secondary education, and I taught high school for eight and a half years at Archbishop Shaw High School and uh, then at Holy Cross. And then when our son was born and my wife took a sabbatical from work, um, I had to make more money. I understand. And so um, <laughs> was fortunate enough to be introduced to the hospitality industry, and that's where I've spent the last 28 years. Mm -hmm. um, the last um, 10 of those as a uh, hotel general manager. And then now um, embarking on a new phase uh, with my role as Catholic, in Catholic Charities. And this is not only a new role for you, but it's a new position for Catholic Charities. It's a newly created position. Correct. Um, what was, do you know what the impetus was to, to start this position? Or I, th I think the impetus um, is really um, starting on a national level. Um, the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops um, nationally for Catholic Charities felt that it was important that a Catholic identity be infused into um, what Catholic Charities does. Certainly not meaning that Catholic Charities only serves Catholics, obviously not true. We serve anyone who is in need, who is, invul who is vulnerable, but that, um, that whatever we do, that Christ the servant is visible and evident. And um, obviously there's a lot of ways to do that, but um, as an ordained deacon, that's the role of the, the deacon. Sure. Um, the priest has his role, the deacon's role in the church is to model Christ the servant to the people of God. And so the role of the deacon and the role of Catholic Charities is uh, very, very close very and very defined, similar. Yeah. And so um, this way um, I can live my vocation as a deacon and infuse that into, into this role. Uh, with Catholic Charities. And also my hospitality background I think helps because um, just like in, in any business, not that Catholic Charities is a business, but people come to Catholic Charities because they're vulnerable, they need something, they're hurting. And so one of the things I'm going to try to do is to make sure that the reception that these people get whenever they walk into one of our programs or whenever they walk into 1000 Howard Avenue or whenever they call the care line at Catholic Charities that the welcome and the greeting is warm and genuine and hospitable and Christ-like. And Catholic Charities has obviously done extraordinary work um, for, throughout its existence, especially in the last couple of years. We've really seen some movements after Hurricane Katrina and Gustav and Ike and the oil spill. It's been amazing what they've been able to accomplish. So certainly the mission is always at the forefront Absolutely. of what Catholic Charities does. But now we're just sort of sort of taking a look back and putting Christ back in that center of that mission. So it's not just another social service agency. Exactly. Say. Because there, there's, I mean, and we collaborate with a lot of social service agencies. We have to because the need is so great and Catholic Charities alone can't do it. But um, what will distinguish us is that um, if Christ is visible in everything we do and everything we say and in how we treat people and interact with people. Well, Deacon Fran, we're already out of time for your interview. It's amazing how fast it goes on television. <laughs> it, it, yes, it is. <laughs> but I, I want to assure you that everyone here at Issues in Faith will be praying for you in your new position and for all the people in Catholic Charities as we continue to focus that mission on, on having Christ visible. It is, like you said, so important. It's an evangelization. It's not only social service, but then right. it's evangelization Correct. and helping people get closer to God. Which Thank is you for our your prayers. Goal. Oh, you're very welcome. I'm sure our viewers are planning praying for you too. Thank you. Well, for more information about Catholic Charities Archdiocese of New Orleans, you can go online to www.ccano.org. And when we come back, being prepared for hurricane season. This is Issues in Faith on LAE. Hey, check this out. 
It has a camera, it has wireless, it sends text messages. And it could send me to jail. In a 2008 study, it was estimated that 20% of teens have electronically sent nude or semi-nude pictures or videos of themselves. Sending or receiving photos like these could result in child pornography charges and other consequences. Parents, please take time to talk to your children about what they send and share with others. For more information, visit www.archdiocese-no.org. When it comes to your children, stay informed and stay involved. I'm here today inside historic St. Louis Cathedral, a place where WLAE has broadcast the Daily Mass for more than 25 years. A recent PBS ruling ensures that this valuable service will continue on WLAE for those looking for daily inspiration, and for the many who are homebound or in our area hospitals who can't attend Mass. But in order to continue to provide the Mass every day, we need your financial support now more than ever. I'm asking you to please consider donating today we have numerous partnership opportunities available. For as little as $32 a month, you can help fund the televising of the Daily Mass, a program that lifts the spirit and enriches the lives of so many of our viewers. And for a donation of $50 or more, we will send you this beautiful signed poster of St. Louis Cathedral as our gift. Please send your contributions to WLAE-TV, 3330 North Causeway Boulevard, Metairie, Louisiana, 7002, or to donate online, log on to WLAE.com and click on the picture of St. Louis Cathedral. For more information on partnership opportunities, call 504-866-7411. At WLAE, we've worked hard to keep the Mass on the air. Now we need your financial support to keep it going. I know that you'll help us if you can. Thank you and God bless. As we all plan our summer vacations, we cannot forget that this fun summer season also brings with it the possibility of severe and tropical storm systems. Joining us tonight to talk about how the church parishes of the Archdiocese are preparing and what you can do to be prepared is Samantha Pichon of the Archdiocese Office of Emergency Management. Thank you so much for being with Thank us tonight. You for having me. And so um, just recently we had our first uh, system in the Gulf, and yes. so um, <laughs> kind of and now everybody's like, wait, hold on, oh yeah, hurricane season's mm -hmm. here. What what are we doing for church parishes? What are you doing in the, in the Archdiocese to prepare churches? Well, we have a program called Matthew 25. It's a disaster preparedness and response ministry dedicated at each specific church to emergency preparedness and response. And so um, I encourage parishioners to contact their pastor about that program. We do a training every year with uh, um, various different churches, one in each deanery, to discuss emergency preparedness issues and actually make a plan for the church. So it's kind of exciting. Fantastic. So each parish will have that information of, of how to be prepared and what mm -hmm. they can do. And then also if something happened, mm -hmm. if they need to help, if they want to help someone out, then they can go there as well yes. and find out how they can help out. Yes. So what are some of the examples of how we can be prepared? Some examples of how we can be prepared are um, there's an excellent website called ready.gov, mm -hmm. which talks about all kinds of key readiness issues. So they have printer friendly checklists that nice. can tell you how to um, create a toolkit for emergency preparedness. They also have um, these little cards that you can generate. You can put your information into the, um, the tool and then mm -hmm. it will generate a card with all of your phone numbers and important contact information. And this is really 
good if you have children or elderly family members who could potentially get lost during during a hurricane evacuation. I mean, I'm sure there's everybody's got stories. I mean, we, personally, we don't even have our own story. We're trying to get in touch with family members, mm -hmm. and so this is be a great way of just helping everybody to get on the same page and, and be prepared, especially learning from our experiences mm -hmm. from the past. So, what are um, when they go to? Uh, I think we Ready. talked about Ready. before ready.gov, mm -hmm. but there's also a situation of uh, overflow or how, what's... Oh, yes, there's a contraflow map. Contraflow. It is available. Um, it's an it's a evacuation route map for the state of Louisiana. It's available at the American Red Cross, and you um, they just received their shipment in, and so they're eager to get these out to all of the church parishes that we have, all of the general community members that we have. So It's really important it's that we, we get a, we're, we're become aware of this information now. We don't wait on Definitely. it because there's so much going on and we, there's a lot of things happening over the summertime. We got vacations, we got planning, we got work, we have all these things, but we really need to be aware of where to go and how to and how to get there. Yes, the contraflow map, what happens is that um, at approximately 64 hours before landfall of a hurricane is expected, the um, contraflow goes into place and so all routes will be going out of the city of New Orleans and you won't be able to come back in. So it's very important to get familiar with what route you're gonna take out of the city so that you won't get lost or you won't get you know shuffled out into an area that you're not familiar with. Where should someone go if there's, there is, a, let's say, a crisis or something like that happening or there a, a hurricane in the Gulf that's coming this way? If, can they go to the, the uh, Catholic Charities website to learn more information, something on the spot of what to do and where to go? There is um, available on the Archdiocesan website, there is a tab called Emergency Preparedness that um, individuals can go to and it has the Matthew 25 information. It has it um, the manual in its entirety available there and it also has contact numbers and resources available But definitely as well. seeing their parish as a source of this information yes. that they, they can call their own parish yes. and speak to someone at the parish about learning about how to respond and how to be prepared for that. Yes. So in the, addition to that they can contact their pastor for more information. Fantastic. Well Samantha thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for your great work and please uh, keep us in prayer and uh, God bless. Thank you. Hey, check this out. It has a camera, it has wireless, it sends text messages. And it could send me to jail. In a 2008 study, it was estimated that 20% of teens have electronically sent nude or semi-nude pictures or videos of themselves. Sending or receiving photos like these could result in child pornography charges and other consequences. Parents, please take time to talk to your children about what they send and share with others. For more information, visit www.archdiocese-no.org. When it comes to your children, stay informed and stay involved. I'm here today inside historic St. Louis Cathedral, a place where WLAE has broadcast the Daily Mass for more than 25 years. A recent PBS ruling ensures that this valuable service will continue on WLAE for those looking for daily inspiration and for the many who are homebound or in our area hospitals who can't attend Mass. But in order to continue to provide the Mass every day, we need your financial support now more than ever. I'm asking you to please consider donating today we have numerous partnership opportunities available. For as little as $32 a month, you can help fund the televising of the Daily Mass, a program that lifts the spirit and enriches the lives of so many of our viewers. 
And for a donation of $50 or more, we will send you this beautiful signed poster of St. Louis Cathedral as our gift. Please send your contributions to WLAE TV, 3330 North Causeway Boulevard, Metairie, Louisiana, 7002. Or to donate online, log on to WLAE.com and click on the picture of St. Louis Cathedral. For more information on partnership opportunities, call 504 866 7411. At WLAE, we've worked hard to keep the Mass on the air. Now we need your financial support to keep it going. I know that you'll help us if you can. Thank you and God bless. The Feast of Pentecost is all about focusing attention on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. This past Pentecost, the New Orleans Catholic Charismatic Renewal gathered at St. Benel Church in Metairie for their annual Pentecost celebration. Margaret Dubasson was there and has the story. The Feast of Pentecost is a special one for those in the Catholic Charismatic Movement. Those closely in touch with the gifts of the Holy Spirit consider it a day in the church calendar that calls them in a special way. The members of the Catholic Charismatic Renewal of New Orleans gathered on Pentecost Sunday at St. Benil Church in Metairie for a rally and mass. People in the Charismatic Renewal have a desire to get together and celebrate Pentecost, which is in a sense uh, our feast. I mean, it's a feast for the whole church, of course, but people who've experienced the Holy Spirit in their lives, I think, um, desire to celebrate that uh, on this feast day, Pentecost. The celebration included praise, worship, singing, and testimony. If you listen closely, you'll hear that these Catholics are praying in tongues. It's something many Catholics don't frequently see or experience, but Patty Mansfield explains that it's a way of freeing yourself in prayer and expanding your ability to pray. Sometimes when we pray, simply relying on our own understanding, we're really limited. But God has given us this wonderful gift of tongues so that we can intercede and let the Holy Spirit pray through us. The celebration also included testimony from several people, including Lane Bowden, who's now on the faculty at the Academy of Our Lady. She talks about her youth as a rebellious, troubled teen and her conversion during retreat in Steubenville, Ohio, where she experienced the presence of the Holy Spirit in a manner very similar to the apostles on the original Pentecost. After that, Lane says, she was convinced that God was real and present in her life. I could feel him in me, and it was almost like the scales of my eyes had fallen, and I knew, like, I knew my name was Lane, I knew that God was real, and you couldn't tell me that that's not the truth, I just knew it. What Lane experienced in Steubenville was a great rush of wind that she heard and felt. Her reaction shocked those around her. One night they bring out um, the monstrance, so Jesus and the Eucharist and the monstrance, and when they bring him out for the um, adoration and the procession, it was literally like wind. You could hear it from one side of the tent. It started to go through, and you could hear laughter and crying start. And then like a wind, it swept through. And by the time it gets to me, I'm crying. And the only thing I could feel was I felt so guilty. I was just convicted. I was convicted of how difficult I was with my parents and teachers. I was convicted of how rude I was, disrespectful. How I just thought I was a brat, you know? Like I was just very convicted, and I was very sorry. And so then um, I noticed that people were looking at me, and so I got uncomfortable, and I could hear them saying, oh, she must have done something really bad. <laughs> On this Pentecost, the charismatic gifts really moved the faithful. Father Marty Gleason, who celebrated Mass for those gathered, says this feast is very meaningful for charismatics. The Pentecost is a great feast. I mean, it really is when you a look at what we're celebrating, it really is the, the, the completion, culmination of the mission of Christ as, uh, as he is, his promise to send the advocate and uh, uh, is fulfilled. And we also um, look at Pentecost as really, you might say, like the birthday of the church because this is really where we, um, this, this joint mission of Christ and the Spirit uh, is, uh, is now moved into the church. You know, we're, we are, uh, you might say, in the kingdom of God right now. Jesus brought the kingdom of God, but it's, it's sort of an already and a not yet kind of thing. You know, he, 
The kingdom is here, and we often glimpse it, but it won't be f- really here in its fullness until Christ's return. For Issues in Faith, I'm Margaret Dubasson. About 150 people attended the celebration. The group has a number of activities planned, and they invite your participation. Check out their website at ccrno.org for more information on upcoming events. If you have a question for us or an idea that you'd like to see on air, please write to us at Issues in Faith, 3330 North Causeway Boulevard, Suite 345, Metairie, Louisiana, 7002, or email us at questions at WLAE.com. Plus, if you miss an episode, you can catch up online at www.archdiocese-no.org. And that's our program for this evening. For all of us at Issues in Faith, thanks for watching and have a great summer. Thanks so much for watching. God bless.